Hello and welcome back to Rock Records Reviewed. My name's Adam and as you can hear I'm still not fully recovered from this lurgy I've had over the last few weeks but uh, hopefully I'm on the mend. But I thought I'd kick off the new year uh, with a big one to get you all stirred up. I'm going to attempt to list the top 10 English rock bands of all time. I know it's one of those silly silly lists I do from time to time which is um, not going to completely please uh, anybody and probably get in parts going to annoy everyone. But I'm going to attempt to fully justify my choices. So what criteria am I using? Well, I'm going to look at the impact they had at the time, the influence they've had, the legacy they've had on rock and pop music. Um, I'm going to look at sales and by sales, I mean not just physical sales, but obviously in the modern age, we need to look at streams and downloads as well. But take the sales figures with a pinch of salt, because a lot of bands claim they've sold a lot more than they actually have. But I've tried to be as accurate as possible. Um, but I'm also going to look at downright talent. It's very easy in the age of numbers and charts and stuff to, 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 to sideline sheer musicianship and ability. And I think some of these choices are absolutely without debate. Only a musical ignorant would argue against their inclusion here. But there are a handful I think you'll find yourself spitting your tea over, uh, uh, spitting your tea out over. And um, so I think it's probably best if you put your mug down and, and focus and, and be prepared to, to, to get irritated. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the music. You know all these bands, you know their music. I, I, I prefer to give just the sort of general overview and, and perhaps, you know, why they're in this list. But look, let's crack on and list the top 10 English rock bands of all time. So at number 10, I'm going to put a band whose first album came out in 1993. Uh, they've made nine studio albums. They've sold 30 million units. And that band is Radiohead from Oxford. Radiohead are an intelligent indie stadium rocker band who they have to be admired for doing things their own way, if nothing else. They brought guitar rock into the new millennium, I think, and with a run of brilliant albums from um, The Benz through um, uh, OK Computer, Kid A and Amnesiac, they really um, uh, built up a huge and devoted uh, fan base that has stayed with them through all their more experimental albums as well. They've also helped revolutionise the record industry by releasing albums direct to their fans and they really don't show any signs of stopping or their, or, or their music diminishing. I think they are perfectly capable of coming out with another absolute classic at any time. And uh, I think they're a bit of a national treasure, really, Radiohead. The other thing, interesting thing is they've been going for such a long time now and they've kept that um, that consistent lineup, which is very, very unusual for a band that's been going uh, that long. There aren't many who've managed to do it. But number 10 in my list is Radiohead. And number nine, a bit of a controversial choice, because are they English, are they American? Well, it's Fleetwood Mac with 18 studio albums, their first one coming out in 1968, and they've sold 150 million units. Now, of course, this is controversial because you could argue that the two of the leading lights of Fleetwood Mac, Lindsey Buckingham and Stevie Nicks, are Americans, but they are essentially an English band, and Nick Fleetwood and John McVie are the founder members, and they are English, and of course... The previous incarnation with Peter Green, it's easy to, for, for that incarnation to be overshadowed because in, in 1969, that band um, with Jeremy Spencer and Danny Kerwin outsold the Beatles. And Peter Green himself has been an enormously influential blues guitarist all over the world. But of course, it is in the 70s as soft rockers um, that Fleetwood Mac really cemented their multi-million selling status with albums like the, the Fleetwood Mac White Album and Rumours. And, you know, ever since they've been a cornerstone of adult-oriented rock. And despite a myriad of members coming and going, including um, uh, McVie and, and Lindsey Bucky and themselves, they still sell out stadiums all over the world. They are immensely popular and generation after generation have fallen for their well-crafted melodic rock. And I think people will still be listening to Fleetwood Mac for generations to come because it's just it's just it's just really lovely, well-made um, uh, middle of the road rock music with a mass, mass appeal. 
And number eight, something very different to that, a band who formed in 1984 and only made four studio albums. And that's The Smiths. And The Smiths have only sold around three million units to date, by far and away the lowest selling act on this list. But I think it's testament to them that they actually merit a place on this list, despite that fact. The Smiths were quite unlike anything else that surfaced in the 80s. They really did just stand out like a jangly guitar riff in a sea of, of uh, processed synth pop. The image, the sound, the exceptional lyrics, there was just nothing like them. And their influence far, far outweighs their commercial appeal, I think. With their poetic and sort of hummable introversion, you can hear their influence all over music nowadays if we're prepared to sort of veer down the side streets of modern uh, modern music landscape. You know, from the Arctic Monkeys, the Stone Roses, uh, the Libertines, and pretty much any young jangly guitar band of the last 25 years. They have been called the band that has inspired a deeper devotion than any other since the Beatles. And I think that may well be true because people who love the Smiths truly love the Smiths. Um, and I think, uh, as I said, it's it's really their, their sonic influence and their styling that has merited them a place on this list. Far more, of course, than their commercial appeal, because as I said, they're by some way the lowest selling band on this list. And number seven, uh, the pioneers of heavy metal themselves, Black Sabbath. Um, 19 studio albums. The first album came out in 1970. They've sold approximately 79, 80 million units. I think as time has gone on, Sabbath's influence and importance has become more deeply appreciated and acknowledged. In some ways, they were overshadowed for many years by Ozzy Osbourne's uh, very, very successful solo career. But that balance, I think, has been redressed now with so many musicians and players citing them as an influence. Without doubt, they're the godfathers of heavy metal and, and, and even all of its subgenres as well. When you when you think about the people who, who, who hold them up, uh, like Metallica, Guns N' Roses, Soundgarden, Korn, Slayer, Alice in Chains, Anthrax, Faith No More, Black Flag. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Countless others cite Sabbath as the reason they started playing metal. And that is an enormous field of music. It's, it's a field of music that some rock fans sort of fear to tread in um, because it's a little bit too heavy, a little bit too fast and dark for them. But I think Sabbath, as the sort of pioneers of metal, are the, are, are the heavy metal band that it's safe and cool and OK to love. And absolutely Sabbath need to be in this list. And number six, um, I'm going to put The Who. Uh, Twelve studio albums and counting. First album came out in 1965. They've sold 30 million units approximately. And again, that's a band who, who perhaps haven't sold as many as you may have thought. But they are still selling out arenas all over the world. Um, the band was built, of course, on the, 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 the dynamic live show um, with Keith Moon on drums, John Entwistle on bass. Um, um, uh, and with Pete Townsend smashing up guitars and everything. But, you know, the band, your band doesn't just exist for so long because they smash guitars up. They really are, you know, uh, they live on because the songs are fantastic, really. Uh, they're just so darn good. You know, Pete Townsend's a genius songwriter, I, I think. His ability to write anthemic songs about the ego and the displacement of outsiders it is really second to none in those songs you hear imagination you hear melody and you hear real power the three things you get in all of their best songs they're a band that are both intelligent and incendiary um i think the their extensive touring across the states in the 60s ensured that they had a huge have a huge have had and still have a huge following there uh, uh, throughout their entire career and although it's undoubtedly now in its twilight it is still glowing brightly enough and they st and Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend still are a formidable live act as a, as a, as a pairing with uh, Pino Palladino and Zach Starkey and the rest of the band so we get to the top five <clears throat> sorry I'm a bit bit hoarse it's um it's been a tough few weeks um now these top five uh I'd be fascinated to know who would leave any of these top five out of their top ten. But at number five, I am going to put 
Pink Floyd. 15 studio albums starting in 1967, a whopping 235 million units sold. Pink Floyd started really as, as part of the, the London psychedelic scene in 1967, but it was not until the inclusion of Dave Gilmore came in that the band's commercial fortunes uh, turned, uh, culminating in, of course, Dark Side of the Moon. I think Dark Side of the Moon is an absolute piece of art. Um, it's not necessarily my favourite Pink Floyd album, but there's no denying the sheer beauty and craft of it. I think it's every bit as uh, a justifiable piece of art as, as, as um, you know, Beethoven Symphony. I really honestly do, and I think people will be listening to it in hundreds of years. Um, once they found that formula with Gilmore, they kind of stayed with it pretty much. You know, the Pink Floyd have a very, very identifiable sound. <clears throat> Um, but, you know, let's it's not all about Gilmore, of course, because Waters is a formidable songwriter and it is the marriage of Waters words um, with Gilmore's guitar and, of course, Richard White's beautiful keyboards and Nick Mason's very, very um, sympathetic drumming that creates that wonderful Pink Floyd sound. It was, you know, G Gilmore's guitar was really just the icing on an already very, very palatable musical cake. Um, there are... They still sell vast amounts of vinyl um, to young generations, which I think is very telling. You know, young people know that this is not a band whose music should be chopped up and streamed in little sort of sound bites and, and morsels. This is sophisticated music for people who want that immersive Pink Floyd experience. And I think they're going to want that experience for many, many uh, years to come. Um, so... Uh, at number five, I am going to put a band whose first album came out in 1973, made 15 studio albums. Sorry, number four, sorry. Uh, a band starts in 1973, made 15 studio albums and have sold a colossal 271 million units. And that, of course, is Queen. Um, Queen are the band really threatening to take the Beatles crown I think is the most popular band in the world you know certainly if you look at sales and streaming figures over the last 10 years their success towers over every other band in this list and I think that really has a lot to do with the ever-growing reputation of Freddie Mercury whose legend just seems to get bigger and bigger with every passing year and with Queen, it's, it, you know, you need to also go back to what I said about sheer talent. This is a band that had it all. Um, they have an appeal across the generations. They have a huge catalogue of enormously popular songs. I'm sure almost every one of you could name, not just name, but probably sing a dozen Queen songs just like that. But at the centre of it all, you have four outstandingly talented, smart, dedicated confident musicians and songwriters who delivered every single time their music is everywhere they are probably the most omnipresent musically band on this list and that's i think all because it ranges it, it, its range is so diverse and uh, their styles are so diverse <clears throat> but there's a, a there's a, a great song for every occasion really they made a massive impact on a a whole generation of, of musicians but it's such an interesting like diverse generation of musicians from Nirvana and Metallica through to Wham to Lady Gaga and hundreds and hundreds of bands in between admittedly they may not be the coolest band on the planet or on this list but I don't think they give a flying fudge about that at all and they may even be derided by some music lovers about which I think they probably care even less there's no denying the mob has spoken. Um, at number three, a band who formed uh, in the late 60s. Their first album came out in 1969. Eight studio albums, 205 million units. It is, of course, Led Zeppelin. It's arguable that um, Led Zeppelin are the single greatest hard rock band of all time. The perfect combination of musicians. When you talk about the chemistry between players within a band, they had it in spades. Of course, led by the genius of Jimmy Page, fronted by the huge voice of Robert Plant, and powered by the indomitable drumming of John Bonham. But their secret weapon was John Paul Jones on bass and keyboards, an outstanding musician whose musicality 
was vital in adding the subtle textures and harmonies that set Led Zeppelin apart from their peers like um, Deep Purple and, uh, and Sabbath. By the mid 70s, they were the biggest band in the world, catapulted there by classics like Stairway to Heaven and Whole Lot of Love. But let's not forget, they were never a singles band. They were all about albums and just as also famous for their epic three hour live shows. Um, still hugely popular to this day, but it is hard not to get the feeling that their legacy is slightly waning in the streaming age when you look at the figures compared to, say, a band like Queen. But there isn't a hard rocker in the world uh, who doesn't owe them a debt and their musical impact on rock music is absolutely colossal. If I listed all the rockers who cite them as an influence, this video would be even longer and more tedious than it already is. Um, so at number two, um, 30 studio albums, 241 million units. Um, they formed in 1964 actually did they form in 64 no they formed, they formed earlier but their first album came out in 64 it is of course the rolling stones you know we will soon be living in a world without the rolling stones and that for me is a very very sad uh thought you know some bands roll into town uh to play and it's a gig um but when the stones roll into town to play it's a media event um They've grown into such a huge brand that crosses cultural barriers and cultures. And you see you see the logo absolutely everywhere. Their children are in the society pages all the time. They are, for some people, literally a way of life. At the centre of it all, you have Jaguar and Richards, who are sort of two larger-than-life cartoon-like characters, who are the lead players in one of Rock's greatest, most epic dramas that's still playing out to this day. Everyone has heard of the Rolling Stones and the outpouring of grief when Charlie Watts died last year was absolutely justified because, you know, we've grown up with the Stones and we're growing old with the Stones and they will always be the coolest band there has ever been or ever will be. Because, you know, and, 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 and their loose, sleazy rock and roll sounds a world away from the sort of slick, perfect process pop you hear on the radio all the time these days. And it's all the better for it. When you combine that music with that image and that clever marketing and you, you have something that people just want to buy into and be a part of. And it really does make me sad that one day in the not too distant future, um, th those, those events, those moments and the band will be gone. So that takes us to the number one greatest English rock band of all time. And it is... Coldplay and Coldplay now hear me out here um no I'm joking I'm joking I'm joking of course it's not Coldplay although I like Coldplay I've got nothing against them at all um the number one British rock band of all time is of course the Beatles 13 studio albums their first single came out in 62 first album came out in 63 a whopping 500 million units um have been sold almost twice as many as any other band on this list OK, so the Beatles at number one is no surprise to anyone. And I don't want to preach pompously um, uh, about this. Um, and I know that many of you uh, will, will prefer the music of other bands. Um, but, you know, if you seriously think the Beatles don't deserve the number one spot on this list, then I'm sorry, but you're just kidding yourselves. Um, this is a band that single handedly spearheaded a cultural revolution. Their impact is so much deeper and greater and more profound than anyone else's that, you know, th their music has, hasn't just been the, the yardstick for every other band since, but it's, it's the bedrock of popular music and has been for decades and decades. <clears throat> the rate of reinvention and innovation was breathtaking. They went from... The, the simple skiffle pop of Love Me Do in 1962 to Strawberry Fields Forever and um, Sergeant Pepper a, a mere five years later, less than five years later in 1967. <clears throat> Their influence is so vast, it just simply can't be measured. And anybody who reads a lot of rock biogs and watches a lot of rock documentaries um, will know that the one band that gets mentioned with reverence every single time is the Beatles. And whether rock and pop 
musicians and songwriters even know or acknowledge it. They all owe them a massive, massive debt. There are far, far more eloquent um, people than I who wax lyrical about the Beatles and what they mean to the world. But the sheer fact that there are so many of those eloquent people, whether they be writers, broadcasters, politicians, musicians, actors, songwriters, singers, that says it all. The amount of information out there on the Beatles is just bewildering and overwhelming but it you know people are constantly trying to come up with something new to say about them because it's all been said but we've just recently had the get back documentary and it's just joyous to watch you know paul writing get back on the spot and see them interacting you are literally watching cultural history being made before your very eyes and the fact that it was all over the media says that the Beatles appeal and allure and power is as strong as it's ever been and in fact probably is only going to get deeper and richer with time. There simply couldn't be any other band at the top of this list and admit it you knew they'd be number one when you started watching anyway. <clears throat> but look that's my top 10 and it wasn't an easy top 10 to do most of it because I've had to leave out so many fabulous fabulous uh bands you know particular shout outs to the kinks and the clash uh, joy division my beloved iron maiden um and there's other bands with acclaim you know from other fields of music jethro tulk and crimson yes cream the specials deep purple elo the cure roxy music uh the police uh, oasis and blur i mean I, you know in england has just produced just some fabulous fabulous bands um since this since the beginning uh, the dawn of, of the rock music era. And you know what? I would really, really be uh, fascinated to, to hear what your top 10 are. But remember, we're not just listing our top 10 favourite bands here. We're taking into account a few other things. Their impact, their cultural legacy, um, how big they are, the sheer talent the band had. So I'd really, <clears throat> really be interested to know what your top 10 is, uh, bearing in mind that criteria. But look, I hope I haven't upset you too much with my choices. Um, I thought it'd be a fun one to kick off the new year with. Uh, I, as I said, I'm still not 100%. I hope to be uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I will see you again soon for another Rock Records review. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Rise,